there's so much going on with Donald Trump, uh, election interference, the courts being weaponized against the Republican Party. There's nobody better to help us understand than Roger Stone. Roger, thank you for being on the show today. Stephen, it's great uh, to be back with you. I was extraordinarily impressed uh, with our last show, uh, and I got a lot of compliments uh, on it. Uh, so I'm really glad to be back with you. Yeah. Well, uh, last night when I saw that uh, the Supreme Court of Colorado is banning somebody for that the people like from running for president, my, my first thought was, get me Roger Stone. And you happen to be on my calendar. So I appreciate you coming on. Let's, let's jump right into that story. What are your thoughts on the Supreme Court justices of Colorado saying that uh, Trump uh, got this insurrection going? He's an officer, therefore, the 14th Amendment, he is blocked from running for president. Yeah, of course, it is the exact opposite of what the lower court in Colorado said. Now, that court said, strangely enough, that on the basis of a congressional committee a report, which is deeply flawed, uh, which member of the January 6th committee was a Trump supporter? Oh, that would be none. Uh, that The January 6th committee is a one of the greatest hoax, uh, hoaxes on the American people since the Warren Commission, if you will. Uh, but on the basis, uh, the lower court said uh, that uh, while Trump may have participated in insurrection, he has no conviction for having done so. Uh, the, the, the 14th Amendment, Section 3, does not apply to him uh, because he is not, based on previous U.S. Supreme Court rulings, an officer of the United States. Uh, first of all, a couple things. The idea that the Trump campaign was taken by surprise or rocked by this or uh, or that this was not uh, uh, expected, I can tell you firsthand, is false. I have participated in conversations regarding the preparation for this decision. It was abundantly clear to us uh, that when we won at the trial level, when I say we, Trump supporters, uh, at the trial level, uh, in Colorado, that this would go to a Supreme Court of which every single member is a Democrat, uh, and that every single member was appointed by a Democrat governor. Even then, uh, this, I think, deeply flawed and obviously politicized decision uh, was only reached uh, by a 4-3 vote of the Colorado Supreme Court. Uh, and what it's important to understand is, as of today, Donald Trump's name is still on the Colorado ballot because uh, the Colorado Supreme Court stayed their own decision uh, pending Supreme Court review. So the only way Donald Trump's name gets removed from the ballot uh, is if this U.S. Supreme Court uh, either declines to take the appeal that I think will probably be filed with the Sup Supreme Court today, from Donald Trump, uh, or if it reaffirms the Colorado decision. Uh, both of those things, I think, are unlikely. So this, uh, I think, may be the law of unintended consequences. This decision was driven by crew, which is not a bipartisan uh, group in Washington uh, uh, surrounding the issue of ethics. It's a left-wing hit squad funded by George Soros and run by Norm Eisen, uh, who had a hand in the Russian collusion hoax, which we now know definitively was a hoax, uh, had a hand in both of the Trump impeachments. They were fraudulent as well. Uh, deeply involved uh, in the heist of the last election. Uh, but even then, uh, this morning I had an opportunity to read some of the dissents coming from Democratic judges. There is no question that this decision uh, denied Trump due process. There was no trial. He wasn't allowed to call witnesses. He wasn't allowed to mount any defense. They just pop out a decision that is clearly a politicized decision. Reading uh, here from the dissent by Judge Samor, a Democrat, uh, writes, I have been involved in the justice system for 33 years now, and what took place here doesn't resemble anything I have ever seen uh, in a courtroom. Uh, the, the judge uh, goes on to say uh, that there was no fair trial here either. President Trump was not offered the opportunity to request a jury of his peers 
uh, experts opined about the facts surrounding the January 6th incident and theorized about the law, including as it relates to the interpretation and application of the 14th Amendment generally and Section 3 specifically. The court and received and considered a partial congressional report, the admissibility of which is not beyond reproach. Uh, Trump has never been convicted of the crime of insurrection uh, or sedition. Uh, and the decision is a clear violation, not only of his rights, but the rights of the people of Colorado uh, to vote for the candidate uh, of their choice. So we have seen similar actions uh, launched in, in multiple states, including uh, Michigan, Minnesota, Rhode Island, Arizona, Florida, and New Hampshire, uh, has been denied at the uh, trial court level in all of those states, in some cases uh, has been uh, that decision was upheld uh, by the state Supreme Courts. Michigan comes to mind. Uh, but it was only a matter of time uh, before some highly politicized Supreme Court decided in favor of removing Trump from the ballot. Uh, so now I have a feeling that those who have fostered this may not get the result that they want. This whole line of attack on President Trump uh, may be disallowed by the Supreme Court. Uh, I think uh, people, I'm not an attorney, but return, attorneys I do respect think that there's very little chance based on the law and the facts uh, that this decision will be upheld. So um, th that's interesting. I didn't think to go read the dissenting opinions. Um, I'm going to have to go in and do that. But They're, they're scathing, uh, yeah. surprisingly, for, for what is clearly a, a partisan body uh, they are absolutely scathing, not what you would expect. Uh, look, this, I think, goes to the much larger question of the way the entire tsunami of lawfare that has been launched against Donald Trump has backfired very badly with the voters. Uh, the voters want to see uh, a free, fair, honest election. Uh, the voters overwhelmingly, within the context of the Republican Party, uh, uh, favor uh, Donald Trump as the Republican nominee, uh, Biden, if he continues to stand for re-election, which to me is an open question, but uh, let's just assume for the discussion, of discussion, a sake of discussion that he will, I, I think people want to have a, a, an election. Uh, what they don't want is to have Donald Trump kneecapped and not have an opportunity to fairly compete. Uh, my hat's off today to Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, who was very fast to denounce this decision, actually said that if this decision is upheld, he'll remove his name from the Colorado primary ballot. The chairman of the Colorado Republican Party uh, said that uh, he believes the party has the right under the rules to cancel their primary and move to a caucus situation to select their delegates. By the way, by law, a party delegate selection, presidential delegate selection, is governed not by state law, uh, but by the party's own state and national rules. Uh, so although the primary date may be set by state law, the mechanism for the selection of delegates is not set by state law in Colorado or, for that matter, any other state. Uh, what's deafening to me uh, is essentially the silence of Ron DeSantis. I mean, he put out a statement critical of the process, but in that statement, which is really kind of convoluted, he never even mentions Donald Trump's name. This guy has the stench of a loser around him, uh, and it grows more obvious every day. Yeah. Well, you know, the other one that's interesting is you, you know that you've messed up in attacking Trump when Chris Christie comes to his defense and says, listen, I don't like this guy. I think he should bow out. But he's never he's never been convicted of this crime. And it's the American people that should be, you know, casting through their votes, whether he should be president or not, not, you know, a, a, a panel of Democrat judges in Colorado. I mean, Chris Christie, for heaven's sakes, is is coming to Trump's defense. Yeah, well, it kind of proves that uh, the blind pig finds the acorn every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Chris Christie's attacks on Trump have been increasingly personal and increasingly nasty. Uh, it's very hard for me to understand how a candidate running around one or two percent of the national vote 
keeps uh, getting invited to CNN or MSNBC. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, I guess I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. Uh, if you're guaranteed to say something bad about Donald Trump, you can always find a seat in those news networks. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on um, I, I had a lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, on and oh. he, he also said, uh, you know, this is a civil war era uh, policy. Uh, and, and that Trump was not an officer, nor did he betray the United States during the Civil War. And so that it was his his legal opinion as a Harvard scholar lawyer that th this was wrong and that this should absolutely not apply. Um, is and, and he even told me, listen, I'm looking forward to voting against Donald Trump for the third time, but it's the American people that get to choose their leader, not not the court systems. Yeah, I, David Schoen, who to my mind may be the single most brilliant criminal defense lawyer uh, in the country, uh, told me the same thing, that 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 this decision is uh, not only legally flawed, but there's some question about whether the 14th Amendment was ever properly uh, passed in itself, uh, but uh, both in Dershowitz's interpretation and that of Schoen, um, this law does not apply to Donald Trump as it's written. Or I should say this amendment does not apply to Trump as uh, it is written. So this is an egregious step uh, by the Colorado Supreme Court. Well, let's kind of pull back and look at the larger question. Uh, what this really is, is a de demonstration of the increasing hysteria, uh, it, indeed the apoplexy uh, of the uniparty, uh, and those currently running the government uh, who are in an alliance with the corporate media, uh, that Donald Trump may well be unstoppable. Uh, the impact of Joe Biden's policies on the country, uh, the epic uh, rate of inflation, uh, the cost of gasoline, which is now obviously being manipulated uh, in preparation for an election, uh, the 76% uh, the increase uh, in the basic price of groceries. Uh, the But more than any of that, continuing evidently with Republican support to ship billions of dollars to Ukraine in a war effort that military experts that I respect basically have told me is already hopelessly lost. Uh, the American people are not happy. Uh, they look back now, I think, at the Trump policies uh, and the impact of those policies uh, with uh, with great fondness. Uh, any Whether you liked Donald Trump's tweets or not, whether you like him or not, and I do, obviously, uh, you cannot deny that we had unprecedented peace and prosperity. Uh, he started no new wars. That can't be said of any president in the modern age. He did, like Joe Biden, he did bring our troops back from the Middle East but he did so strategically and without the countries in which they were posted collapsing around them on their way out because Trump used the extraordinarily expensive drone technology that we, the taxpayers, spent, spent so much money on to keep our enemies pinned down to cover our retreat. Uh, Joe Biden didn't do that. We just cut and ran from Afghanistan. Uh, and the result is a uh, unacceptably high number of dead Americans, plus a dead number of Afghanis who supported us uh, and stood with us uh, to try to save their own country. So uh, I think the American people will look back with fondness now uh, of the Trump days uh, and how much better the country was, how much better their lives were, uh, how much more economic opportunity there was at that time. Uh, I think that uh, this targeting uh, of the president uh, through the judicial system has particularly backfired badly among African-American voters, among Hispanic voters, and among younger voters who see through all this and see that he's just not getting a fair shake. Yeah. Do you think like uh, with with what we saw with the, the mugshot in Georgia uh, and the, the the cases up in New York with Stormy Daniel and, and the $250 million uh, case where they're trying to dismantle the Trump organization. It, it seems like every time they do this, 
Trump's popularity surges and he actually picks up uh, appreciation and uh, interest in, in people that maybe didn't like him in the past because they're now seeing him as an abused underdog who is is fighting for the American people. Will will this Colorado situation, in fact, make him more popular? I think it actually will. I mean, first of all, I agree with every, the analysis that you just put forward. Now, that's, that's counterintuitive. Normally, when a candidate for federal office uh, gets indicted, uh, either at the state or the federal level, support for their candidacy implodes. Uh, their their financial base, their fundraising capability evaporates. The exact opposite has happened here. So with each uh, unfair and patently political attack on Donald Trump, uh, you have seen uh, his base of support intensify. You've seen him pick up new voters that he didn't have previously, people who did not vote for him in the last election, who now say they will vote for him. Uh, and it is really, really turbocharged uh, his fundraising, most of which comes from small uh, and middle-sized donors. So unlike those challenging him for the nomination, whose contributions come overwhelmingly uh, from you know millionaires and billionaires, Trump's uh, da- his financial base in the country, which has expanded very dramatically because of these attacks, um, has dramatically expanded. Uh, you could never have foreseen any of this. But then... <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. Everything about Donald Trump is improbable. I mean, he's really, in terms of all the political norms that we're used to, uh, he's he's really changed everything. Look, uh, until Donald Trump was elected president, every president we had was either a governor, a senator, a congressman, or a general. We never had any, a business person had never been successfully elected president. Closest we ever came was 1940, when the Republican Party on the sixth ballot uh, in a heavily contested convention, nominated Wendell Wilkie, uh, who was a media phenomena uh, created by the corporate media of the day. Uh, It's kind of interesting. Wilkie had actually been a delegate to the 1932 Democratic Convention. And by 1940, uh, he was a a businessman, lawyer from New York City, uh, nominated by the Republican Party. Uh, While he ran a very strong race against Franklin Roosevelt, Uh, he lost. So uh, Trump has broken the mold in every possible way. Uh, And uh, look, I'm obviously uh, among his strongest supporters, but even I did not foresee uh, this revival of his popularity, this expansion of his popularity uh, among the voters and the American people. They look back at the Trump days uh, with nostalgic, uh, positive feelings, Uh, And that's good because that's the basis on which you want to run the election. Let's compare the impact of Joe Biden's current policies with the impact of Donald Trump's policies when he was president. Oh, you thought his you thought his uh, his tweets were crude. Uh, You thought that he was uh, too rough spoken. Really? How was uh, the economy? Uh, Did you have a job? Uh, Did you have economic opportunity? Uh, I think people will put those things aside now when they see, honestly, how bad things are. Uh, Look, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, who I worked against in the 1980 election, Carter was not a bad man. He was just a bad president. He was a good man. He was a a Christian. Uh, He was honest. He was also not the choice of the party establishment. They surrounded him once he became president, uh, but he can now, he's in hospice. He's gravely ill. Uh, His wife just passed. Uh, I met her when I was working for Reagan. Uh, both the Carters were extraordinarily gracious when I met them, and I was working for their opponent at the time. They were, they, uh, they are, and were very decent people. But now Jimmy Carter can go to his rest knowing that he was not the worst president in American history. That position has been taken from him by Joe Biden. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, I, I've been pretty impressed with uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. I was fortunate to have him. He gave up one of his lunch lunch uh, times to come on my show. Um, but I, I wanted to get your opinion. He says that he's an alpha male. He's a business person. He's self-made. He's wealthy. He's not looking to be second place. He has no plan B. Is this guy really just gunning for being the the person that's picked for vice president? 
He's very good at parroting similar uh, ideology and policy to Trump. He's never been verbally abusive or uh, denigrated the, the MAGA Republicans. Um, he does this thing like you uh, pointed out in Colorado. Hey, if, if I'm there, I, I want my name off the ballot if Trump isn't. What, what are your thoughts on him? What, what is his real, I know he's trying to win, but is he also setting himself up to be second place? Well, I've come around on him. I had an initial skepticism about him. Uh, look, I think he's very talented. Uh, he's very articulate. Uh, he is saying things that no one else will say. I mean, questioning that the American people don't know everything they should know about 9-11 is a perfect example. Uh, the role of the Saudis in 9-11, for example. Uh, so he's willing to touch uh, issues that nobody else has been willing to touch. Uh, I had some initial skepticism about him based on some things uh, in his background, but I've honestly come around. Knows I think that he's sincere. Uh, people do change over time. Uh, a person who gets new information but doesn't change their opinions based on that information is somebody I don't want in public office. So I take him at face value. I like him. Uh, I like his combativeness. I like his courage. Uh, I like the fact that he is a uh, recognized uh, that the contest in America today is not between Republicans and Democrats or even liberals and conservatives. Uh, he has identified himself as an outsider. Um, I think he's probably realistic that he is unrealistically uh, a vice presidential contender. Uh, uh, would he accept a position uh, in a Trump cabinet? My guess is he probably would. Uh, he's also a young man. In other words, uh, even if he is not the nominee of the Republican Party for president and vice president uh, or vice president, which I think he's highly unlikely to be, uh, he still made a major impact on this race uh, and he has an extraordinarily bright future. Uh, is that in 2028? Perhaps. I mean, I think he has uh, uh, he has avoided the mistake made by Ron DeSantis, uh, who heretofore would have been thought to be the front runner for 2028. I think he, there's a subset of MAGA voters uh, that he will never ever be able to get back based on his personal conduct, uh, regardless of uh, his record in Florida. And his record in Florida, frankly, since I live here and I just got my insurance bill uh, and my electric bill, his record in Florida, I assure you, is very arguable. I love it when people who live in Mississippi or Colorado tell me he's done such a great job in Florida. Really? Well, you don't live here. Uh, we've got huge problems here. I like his rhetoric, but I can tell you right now in the Broward County school system, we've just approved a curriculum that is approved by the ADL, which pushes critical race theory. Uh, didn't the governor sign an executive order that, that prohibited this? He did. What is he doing to enforce it? The answer is nothing. So uh, if there is a, if you had to declare a front runner for 2028, which is impossible to do because you don't know whether a star is going to rise out of the next Trump administration. You don't know who Trump will select for vice president. I don't think he himself knows at this moment if he's got a short list. I suspect he is keeping it to himself. Uh, I think his focus right now is on winning Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada uh, by a substantial margin, because the earlier he puts away this nomination, uh, the more money can be saved and stockpiled for a general election, uh, and the more time to bind up any divisions uh, in the party. Yeah. Um, you're, you're brilliant when it comes to this political stuff. Um, right now, how important is the polling or is it just winning these primaries and then focusing on the swing states or does he have to keep a, a national campaign going? What What's the proper order for that? Well, look, I'm really glad you asked that question. I, I have said uh, on my own show and in other shows uh, that that polling has to be seen through uh, a certain prism, which is when you look at a poll, you have to examine the sample the sample size, whether the sample has been correctly drawn to be a representative sample of the voting group that you're trying to measure. You need to look at the way the word questions are worded. You need to look at the order of, of the questions. Uh, 
uh, and so on. So what I said was a poll can can uh, be rigged for a predetermined desired result. And you see that in politics. Uh, people will conduct a poll with a predetermined desired result because they want to use it, for example, as a fundraising tool or as a PR tool. Uh, how does that get translated? Well, I saw Roger Stone said all the polls are rigged. That, that's not even <laughs> remotely what I said. Uh, but I, I have also said that generally speaking, you should never look at any one poll and say, okay, well, this poll shows me what's going on. Rather, one should look at a series of polls, all of whom have solid professional methodology in terms of the sample size, the the uh, avoiding order bias in the order that the questions are asked uh, in the wording of the question and so on. Uh, and then look at the average of several polls taken within roughly the same time frame to spot a trend. Uh, one poll may show, just speaking euphemistically, uh, one poll shows Trump 39 points ahead. The other one shows him 42% ahead. Well, those are, those are both showing the same thing because there is a deviation based on sample size uh, and all polls are, you know, plus or minus a couple points. The larger the sample size, the more likely the accuracy of the poll. The smaller the sample size, the less likely the accuracy of the poll. So if one will would look, for example, at the real clear politics polling average, which is the best place to go, and you can see everything, uh, you will see that this nomination contest is over, that Trump is now in some polls leading by as much as 60%, that the candidacy of Ron DeSantis has largely collapsed. People may not remember this. He was once leading Donald Trump in the national polls. He was once leading Donald Trump in some of the early state polls. Uh, Nikki Haley uh, is clearly pulled ahead of him in some places. She's competing with him for second in other places. But the gap between both of them and Donald Trump can be as much as 30, 40, 50, 60 percent, depending on the jurisdiction. So um, I think that Trump will continue to answer your question more specifically. I think this Colorado gambit is going to backfire the same way the previous attempts uh, to uh, to hurt Trump's candidacy uh, through election interference uh, and the judicial system has. I think he is only going to grow stronger. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this is why I bring you on the show. I, I I love your insight. You just, you know, you've got so much experience and understanding with this. Thank you so much for coming on. If people want to watch your show, follow you, what's the best way to do that, Roger? The best place to go is stonezone.com. There you can get uh, the link to my daily show, which is at stonezone.live or at rumble.com slash Roger Stone. Since it's Christmas, uh, if you go to the shop uh, at uh, stonezone.com, uh, you can get your very own Roger Stone. This is a stone to which I have signed my name. Uh, yes, this is a paperweight. It is the fulfillment, actually, of the Whitestone prophecy in the Bible. Uh, and um, I started selling these to fund my legal defense. I wasn't selling any of them until uh, Rolling Stone, the New York Observer, and the Daily Beast made fun of me. Uh, then I sold 15,000 of them. Uh, each one is hand-signed. You can also get your uh, copy of uh, my book, Stone's Rules, uh, with an introduction by Tucker Carlson, uh, or a copy of my book, The Man Who Killed Kennedy, The Case Against LBJ, New York Times bestseller. Many people interested in the Kennedy assassination as a historical topic. And of course, you can get your Roger Stone Did Nothing Wrong t-shirt, which someday the Smithsonian will buy from you for millions of dollars. So go to stonezone.com, go to the shop there for all your Christmas shopping for your Patriot family or circle of friends. Great. Thank you, Roger, for coming on. Happy holidays, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Stephen. God bless you.